being excited and passionate about lasers, is there any sort of pet peeves of the way that lasers are seen in uh, science and tech that in, in sort of media or what are the common things you need to dispel from people's well, ideas about lasers? Well, especially, um, small, especially small boys oh, always think it's more like a lightsaber and so I get asked when it's children what lightsabers and that bothers me because a lightsaber is really just a floor as a light tube, right? At the point, the reason the laser is so intense is that all the light is going in one direction and these lightsabers, I think it's just, um, Hollywood tried to say we, we want to still have a sword fight, but we want it to be high tech. But since the light is going in all directions, it can't be intense. It's just what, it's just a light bulb. And so people don't understand that. Um, I always, in my own personal work, I take lots of pictures of optical benches, et cetera. And then I show them to other people in media and they're like, but where are the lasers? And I'm like, well, A, they're not switched on when I'm pointing a camera down the lens towards them. But if they were switched in, probably wouldn't see it in the effect. Yeah, um, I guess I wanted to broach this topic. Do you feel sort of responsibility or sort of maybe an unfair burden to talk about women in science, their diversity in science being sort of, uh, you were the third uh, women to win a Nobel Prize in physics. And I mean, you probably, do you feel like you get asked about that too much when your other male counterparts probably don't get asked on the, but. Well, I mean, obviously I'm going to get asked. And, and actually when it happened at the time, I thought it was unfair to the men too. It was almost all the attention was me being the third woman. And I thought, why should the two men not get as much attention as me for their work? Uh, and, and so in a way I felt it was unfair attention on me. I don't think it was extra special of me to be able to do it while wearing possibly a skirt. Um, and I'm not someone who really ever struggled with being the only woman in the room or for something. And so, and I haven't had, uh, and I've been very, very blessed that I have not had these problems that many women have had. Uh, and so I felt unqualified to discuss it. So this is why I find it very difficult because uh, to bless you walked in somebody's shoes, it's very hard to understand. And people want advice and, uh, and, and uh, I don't have that much advice to get. Yeah. People often ask me why I went, why I went into physics. And I was like, I was in school, I was good at it. It was easy. It didn't seem like a, like there was a barrier in the way when you're academic and gifted in a subject and sort of other things fall away. Exactly. And also, I mean, I was very good at math and physics and I wasn't very good at most everything else. And so my path in life was really just laid down for me. So I was not somebody that other people could say, don't do that, because A, I had nothing else to do, and B, I was pretty good at it. So chances are the person that wanted to say it to me, they shouldn't be saying it to me. Do you feel like it's allowed you to open up space or work in sort of policy areas or, or, or talking about other things directly away from your research work, or is that, that something you've gone into? So just recently, we've launched our, our new trust institute, and it's a trust in research um, undertaken in science and technology, uh, because I am worried about the erosion of trust in science. I, I'm, you know, we have the climate crisis that we have to deal with, and so we need everybody on board so that we have all of our politicians absolutely driven to help with it, um, and so that nobody is fighting their way of doing that. Uh, but also through the vaccine hesitancy, and I'm not a vaccine scientist and I'm not the one to talk about it, but I, I was dismayed, I was dismayed at, at how politics was driving people's health choices. At the, where did we come from? How did this possibly happen? Your health choice should have absolutely nothing to do with your politics. You should, you should be able to think politically one way, but, but for the sake of their health, be trusting the science and the, and the medical professions. Uh, and so I am uh, going to work towards that. Yeah, I, uh, there's a very famous quote from a UK politician during our Brexit referendum, which was, uh, don't listen to experts anymore. <laughs> like, they've got nothing to say, which was... Uh, and and how know. sad is that, yeah. right? And so, um, yes, I think we have to get that. It used to be that scientists were held in a high regard, and somehow we've become part of this elite, and you can't trust the elite. And it's like, I don't know what makes us so elite. It's a... We've, you know, spent a lot of time educating their chefs, but it's not like we're billionaires that are living some high life or something. So I'm a little surprised. How have you seen the sort of development of the ultra-fast laser community since your sort of PhD days to now? Was it a few small research groups, but now it's expanded a lot, or how would you sort of 
Yes, I think um, UltraFast was sort of maybe a fun one to get into because it was small and you could go to the UltraFast conference and we all seemed to get to know each other from around the world. It was sort of 200 people showed up and, and it, to what PhD it was to the same 200 people. Uh, and uh, now it's exploded, you know, between high intensity or the outer second world or, or the terahertz community or there's just so many different uh, ways it's too large for one community, you know, for a total community to the it would you say the pressures of sort of our academic life have changed dramatically since you were doing your PhD or have they, uh, how would, would you see the experience that PhD students have currently is very different to your own or are they quite similar? Well, to some extent, and, uh, I think that most students today believe in a work-life balance and that wasn't true in our day. Uh, so, so they have that, that's maybe on the plus side. But on the negative side, because of uh, the explosion of the amount of journals there are, but also the way we counted, it's too easy to count. We did not know our citation counts in my day because you had to go to a library and pull out a book and figure out how to look it up in the book. And it was only once a year, you know, would those books change. And so nobody, I mean, I guess the libraries had them, but nobody bothered to do this. It was cumbersome and it was really all about where you getting uh, talks at the conferences and you were getting known by these talks at the conferences, which is still true. But now we're all judged on these citation things or which um, journals where you're putting your uh, work in. And so I, I do like to point out that I won the Nobel Prize for a paper that's not in what's considered the high impact journal. And we did not have to worry about that in those days. And, and I think these things are arbitrary and, and also push people to work in only the fields that are massive. Because unless you're working in a massive field, how do you get high citation counts? You need all of those people doing it. And do we really want everybody flocking to a few fields? Do we not, you know, if we may be missing things that are coming out of all things that would just be offshoots. But, so I think that's a shame. That metrification of research where we have loads of other impacts, like it, I think it ends up sort of salamying research results. So like people will publish sort of parts of findings over like three or four papers instead of putting together one big paper, you know, that they get more citations for each of those five instead of but, wait. Yeah, yes, I think it is becoming a little too much gamesmanship and not just about, you know, it used to be that you wanted the paper for the next year's conference and at the same time you would then turn that into a journal article, and, and that seems to be gone a little bit. 